that. Uh, so Mamie, would you like to maybe give a quick uh, intro about yourself? And then afterwards, uh, Steve, after Steve, we will definitely talk further about the fund and Accelerator. Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be a part of this today. Um, as you mentioned, I'm Mei Mei. I'm on the lifestyle content team here at Meta. I'm responsible for building strategic content for a lifestyle vertical, especially for interests. Um, as Farah mentioned, like I am running the Lifestyle Accelerator that we we, uh, we launched a couple weeks ago at AWB. So excited to talk about that today with you as well. Um, before joining Meta, I was at Microsoft on the biz dev team doing negotiations and deals for Microsoft 365. Um, I'm from Taiwan originally, so um, uh, on a green card and sort of uh, immigrated here about 10 years ago. But yeah, super excited to be here today with you. Thank you. Thank you, Mimi, for uh, taking the time. Uh, we got really excited when you make the announcement, so we are really looking forward to talk further about the uh, funding. But without further ado, maybe uh, first uh, we can start with Steve. Uh, I will ask a few questions, of course, but Steve, maybe you can give us a little bit of background of uh, like for, for the last couple of years, you are quite active everywhere. So mm -hmm. maybe you can a little bit tell us what's going on uh, on your side um, and then we can take it further. Certainly. Yeah, so I'm, I'm Steven Rogers. I'm the uh, founder of a VR game studio called Fourth Wall Breakers. We've been working on a bunch of different VR titles over the past few years, uh, currently working on Coaster Mania, which is uh, coming was coming to the official store in October before the open store policy change, and now uh, might be coming out a little bit sooner than that. But uh, worked on that, on a Pillow, on a Brushwork, and a bunch of different VR titles. Um, over the last couple of years, also joined a bunch of different hackathons that Meta has sponsored um, and was the winner of uh, two of them. One was uh, in Menlo Park a couple of years ago that we won uh, with a title called Submersed, where your uh, room was drowning and being flooded with water. You had to plug up the holes on your walls. And then more recently, uh, won the hackathon in New York uh, this past May, I believe um with a title called pencil which was a mixed reality app that is supposed to teach you how to draw um by overlaying stuff onto your piece of paper and using real uh pencil and paper um so yeah that that's been my journey and uh been working on trying to push pencil even further and it's gotten a ton of attention from the press and uh, the community and we've grown since uh, the the hackathon created a discord server with over a thousand people and uh just pushing uh it further to turn it into a real title amazing can you can you let know when is the exact the time of the pencil uh project that you did the, the hackathon do you remember how many days ago uh it, roughly about two months ago is is uh the the time frame so within two months, it's already been featured on uh, Upload VR Summer Showcase, uh, been featured on different news articles, and um, yeah, it just keeps on growing. Amazing, amazing. I think, uh, of course, uh, we know Steve because he he's also uh, one of our uh, experts and instructors for XR Bootcamp courses that we are, he built the famous Gorilla Zilla game as well that you are actually learning mixed reality development. We just shared about this uh, Udemy course a, a few minutes ago while talking about the hackathon. So um, all of these titles uh, in such a short period of time is amazing, Steve. So um, before going to maybe Emre, uh, I would like to ask a few questions since we are already talking about hackathon just to understand um, how, how, how it works for like you are... Uh, but um, you are one of the few people that I have seen that you are really like a rapid prototyper mindset. And uh, you always come up with new, cool, unique ideas, which actually works, you know. And even uh, we were talking with uh, some meta team. They also uh, told that they were thinking, OK, it, this pencil may not work. And then they realized that it actually works, you know, because sometimes you don't understand uh, till you make it right that if it works or not so uh tell us like what kind of mindset you have right now that makes you so much motivated to create new concepts and how you understand that uh, it can actually work like how, how your empathy machine works i, I would like to yeah. 
Certainly. So I think, I mean, the, the front of it is just experience and been working in the space for a long time. So I've more than uh, the things that I've succeeded at, I've had so many more failures of uh, things that did not work. So just learning off of those mistakes and figuring out um, different concepts that, that might not work as well. Um, with pencil in specific, I'd worked on a title called Brushwork, which was a painting simulator for VR. So I had experience working in that space and uh, knew kind of the limitations of the headset. Um, but my, my philosophy for a lot of stuff that I work on is trying to push the tech as, as much as possible and seeing what is only really possible within a mixed reality headset versus um, I think you had mentioned earlier creating titles that, you know, are either flat to, to VR or VR to MR transitions, um, though those can work. I, I think what makes compelling projects are what really can only be done within that specific medium. But do you have some kind of like a turnusol paper that you you have, or are you immediately start uh, uh, trying and then understanding? Okay, this this may work. Uh, is it like I'm just trying to understand? Is it like only come to your mind and then you immediately understand that okay, it may work, or is it something that uh, you have to a little bit uh, make some prototypes on shapes or on yeah. uh, Unity? There, there's definitely a process there. I mean, I think sometimes ideas just come come to me and uh, try experimenting them, uh, specifically with Unity. Um, usually the first step for me is if I think something is compelling and a good idea, I'll hop on Shapes XR and kind of prototype it and see visually if it makes sense there. Uh, for example, for Pencil, that, that was the first thing that we did. And they have a really nice tool where you can attach stuff to the controller. And that kind of unlocked a aspect of, of the app that we use at the hackathon and still currently using. Um, but yeah, just trying to figure out if something works. I think the best way is actually getting hands on and building something quick and dirty uh, within like a day or two. And, you know, if, if it doesn't work, the least that you wasted was was a day and if it does work then uh yeah you you have something compelling on your hands amazing amazing uh one last question we will go back to you but uh, one last question so how how this um how this two months period process worked okay congratulations you are on stage you get the hackathon uh prize and then what happened like uh did you do anything afterwards or did you know that you are already going to a place that uh, may end up with a store. Uh, what was the process after the hackathon, or how you how you continue working with your team? Uh, I think this these are very really interesting. Certainly. So so after winning the hackathon, um, we had gotten a decent amount of attention. I had posted on LinkedIn and Reddit the, the project just to show it off and a bunch of uh, got a bunch of likes and upvotes and we decided quickly that hey this might become a, a real product so we need to start getting people involved and figuring out kind of the the next steps for it so we immediately created a discord community um, and started doing more marketing and updates and uh, from that uh, the press had had reached out to us with upload VR and mix mixed news um and that was kind of the the big motivator seeing all these people coming in um and not only that but using that community that is coming in to give us feedback uh so we directly after that we decided um that you know the hackathon what we had made we felt confident to hand out to people as a demo um so from our discord community we opened up a release channel for people to try out the game early um, and that has been our source of feedback for figuring out what needs to be improved, as well as a source of marketing in a sense, because people are creating their own drawings and trying out the app and then sharing it with other people. Perfect, perfect. Uh, how was Meta's support and uh, feedback in the meantime? Uh, just like a understanding like uh, for navigating to the right direction? Yeah, it, it's been 
immensely positive and uh, super helpful as well. I've had different conversations with so many different teams at Meta of how to kind of push a uh, pencil forward. Cause um, from what I've heard, they, they truly believe in the app and that's been an encouragement on, on our end and um, uh, had discussions with, with May May and, and Anon as well at uh, AWE. We, we got a chance actually within, I think, was it a couple of weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, we were at AWE and XR Bootcamp let us uh, take a, a small portion of, of their booth and, and showcase Pencil there, which was great. And yeah, uh, Meta's just kind of helped us guide in the direction of what uh, ways we, we should be improving the app and kind of strategy uh, is the, the main point forward. I think it's very valuable for a um, headset platform or pro, uh, like a hard uh, hardware manufacturer, right? That you are actually creating something, not only taking hundreds or thousands of people's attention in such a short period of time, but also keep them engaged, keep them on the headset, right? Because I think there are not so much apps out there that makes you at least stay a couple of hours. Uh, this is one of the few apps, maybe especially on that specific skills category that can make this, I think we will also talk a little bit about that with May May, uh, what kind of apps that make sense for engaging users. Um, so thank you, Steve. Uh, uh, Richard, do you have questions to Steve directly? Because uh, if you have, I will take you in now. Otherwise, uh, we will continue with Emre. Yeah, hi, Farhan. Hi, Steven. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to kind of throw in there with what you were saying about how you got inspired to uh, give the pencil mixed reality a try. Uh, so I had a little bit of a similar experience where I wanted to make like a VR wave runner game where you're like uh, riding the wave runner on the waves and bouncing around. And of course, the uh, first stop there would be like, oh, that's totally going to give you motion sickness. And, you know, it's not going to be like uh, something you can do in VR. Uh, but I know with motion sickness, the most important thing is that you have to have like a little bit of acceleration and deceleration because I've done experiences where you're like driving in a car and if it just like all of a sudden starts moving, that'll totally give you motion sickness. So because I understood that and because I know how like the Unity's physics system works, I was able to build this Wave Runner experience and I'm a little bit crazy. Uh, I actually built it while I was on the, it was called the train jam where we took the train from Chicago to San Francisco. So not only was I building this, you know, motion sickness simulator, uh, but I was also building it on the train. Um, but yeah, surprisingly, uh, it actually worked out pretty well. And, uh, you know, most people could play it for like 10 to 20 minutes without like feeling mo too much motion sickness. It really depends on how much you were bouncing on the waves. Uh, and then like, uh, I didn't have any restrictions on it. So you can actually like do flips and stuff in the air. And so of course, once you start doing stuff like that, that's when the motion sickness will kick in. But yeah, uh, the point I'm making is that I think, you know, it's important to understand, you know, what might work, what might not work, uh, but then also to just take chances. Cause I knew when I was working on it, like, okay, I might build this and it might just give people uh, you know, nausea right away, right away, like instantly. Uh, but I figured, you know, let's just give it a try and see what happens. So I think people should, you know, feel free to experiment like that, kind of like uh, Roger did there, or sorry, Stephen did there with the uh, pencil. Yeah, amazing, amazing. By the way, anyone who has any questions, feel free to use a Q and A tab or also raise your hand, like uh, Richard. So it will be quite interactive. Uh, we want to hear from you, Meta and the team uh, would like to answer any of your questions. Think of this like a tips uh, and some uh, very nice insider info that we you can get uh, before you apply for hackathons or funding or accelerator. So moving to Emre. Emre is uh, also another interesting uh, VR, XR developer uh, with a very small studio like Steve. But uh, things being produced are uh, really uh, something very impactful for the community, for the for the platform itself. Um, maybe some of you already heard of Paradiddle. Uh, I would like to give the stage to to Emre. And maybe talk a little bit about his journey. Sure. Uh, yeah. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Emre. So I've been. I, we have a tiny studio of three people working on a VR 
and MR drumming app called Paradiddle for the past several years now. Uh, before that, I actually, I've been in the XR industry since about 2014. I got started working at Disney Imagineering, uh, working on XR tech for the different theme parks, a design of the theme parks Disney has around the world, and then went on to Magic Leap where um, I was building prototypes for the hand tracking team there. And then once I also got my green card at Magic Leap, I, I left and then went full time um, on a side project I had been working on for a while, which was a VR drumming prototype I had. And for this past like five or six years now, we've been developing that further and further. Um, the first prototype came out in 2017, but since then we've added so much where it's a mix of a rhythm game and a simulator. Uh, but also as of last year, you can even connect real drum kits to it uh, using mixed reality on the Quest 3. So you can augment your real drum kits as well as use totally virtual drum kits. Um, and our goal since the beginning was to do something outside of gaming for VR because uh, we always believe that, um, you know, games are obviously super cool and super great um, for, for the industry, but the real use cases that I was always excited by were outside of that realm. And that's ultimately what I thought was going to make this um, like an interesting medium, all the things you could do outside of gaming with it that could you know expand your skills in interesting ways. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of been our uh, motivator from the beginning. And it's cool to see the industry uh, you know, shifting a bit more in that direction now. Amazing, amazing. I think uh, maybe a few questions for you as well before we move to the um, lifestyle app accelerator details with mm -hmm. Mimi. Um, you were in App Lab, right? You were not in store first, right? So um, things are changing. Of course, maybe we can quickly tap into that as well. But um, back then, when you were on App Lab, you managed to take a lot of attention, right? Uh, now, uh, this discovery is uh, increasing, so it's good for everyone, but even your app managed to, to uh, create huge uh, interest from the audience, especially uh, you brought, your app brought people who have never used VR before just because they are uh, drummers, right? Just because they are, um, and music uh, enthusiasts, right? So, uh, so how how would um, you manage to bring an audience who are not maybe into VR before into uh, with the help of your app? Uh, does it matter that I'm already a VR user uh, to use an app, or uh, is it something that it only matters what is the value that I'm getting? Uh, yeah, I think that's a good question. Uh, I think the initial attention we got was. You know, as I was saying, everyone was thinking of VR as like a gaming and, you know, entertainment only device. So I think it people wanted to see more interesting use cases that were outside of that. Um, so the one way we marketed the app a lot when we were first launching was I would play uh, drum covers of songs. So I'm a drummer, too. So I would I would just sit in my room and just play drum covers of songs I knew how to play in real life in VR so that I could show, you know, it is really possible to play a song completely in VR without needing any physical equipment. Uh, and I, I think that ended up becoming a real, really, um, you know, successful marketing strategy for us because it showed, it proved to you that you can use this technology to, you know, learn to play a song or maybe even teach an instrument to yourself uh, without the need for any expensive equipment, you know, needing physical space for it. Uh, worrying about making noise so it really showed the use case for the app uh, in one you know in a few minutes very successfully uh, and even though we got a lot of drumming enthusiasts and existing drummers into the app i'd say most of our users are have never played the drums before and you know especially with the launch of quest they they already have this device they have a quest that they bought for gaming but they're looking for more like other things they can do with it and you know one of the use cases that always comes up is oh you can you can use it to learn an instrument like that's a you know everyone wants to learn an instrument super fun to play with friends or even on on your own uh so yeah i think 
focusing on that more learning based use case uh, and always trying to showcase that in our marketing helped a lot. Um, yeah, and the app lab was interesting because as you said, discoverability was pretty difficult uh, for a while. Um, yeah, we just tried to stick to our marketing. I'd say one other thing we did uh, well, I think is we tried to be mindful of what was changing in the industry. So every time a new big feature was being introduced to, um, you know, to the quest, uh, for instance, mixed reality, like we always tried to be catch that wave and see what we could do with it. Um, so, you know, for us, mixed reality had a big impact for the product, but also marketing wise, because uh, you didn't have that many apps showing mixed reality features. And I think in our case, we were all able to show something pretty interesting using it. So always being mindful of what's coming next and trying to, you know, incorporate that either in your marketing or your product itself, um, I think is also pretty important for discoverability pur purposes. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, there are also many uh, drumming or musical instruments or uh, like a, at least like a uh, entertainment apps that you are playing with songs, etc. Right. Mm -hmm. So being standing out uh, on a, a specific target is very interesting. The same thing that with uh, cooking as well. Like uh, there are definitely it's not the first probably cooking recipe preparation app in VR. Right. Probably there are many other projects, mm -hmm. but using AI to do that is the one that stands out as well. So that's why uh, in, at the beginning we were talking about this AI plugin just to uh, tell everyone, like, find something that you are special so that you can show this to Meta, show, you can show this to, to the audience. And, of course, uh, we are always talking, when, uh, Fabian and Richard is also our instructors, uh, when we are prototyping, um, we are ask, telling always this, if you have a passion or subject matter expertise on something non-VR, non-gaming, non-Unity uh, Unreal, Combine that skill with your XR prototyping so that you can actually be the probably the first person who can actually build something around this, right? You were a drummer already. Yeah. Probably there is no one else that can uh, uh, make an empathy of a drummer. And then if you don't uh, feel it, uh, that it's good, you will also not release it, you know? So uh, yeah. Meta and us, we will trust you much you much more than anyone else, right? Uh, so especially for these things. I know, Steve, in your case, you are the best uh, the painter or drawer as well, but uh, probably uh, because of your uh, previous projects, definitely there's a passion towards that as well, as far as I can see. Yeah, well, uh, I'll be honest, I'm not the, the best drawer artist in the world. So that was kind of the motivator for creating this app was to... To teach myself how to draw um, you drew it you made it out of necessity exactly exactly solve a problem but also learn a skill amazing <laughs> great great uh perfect i think um, we can go back to the questions uh i have a few more questions to you guys but uh first uh, let's a little bit before without further ado talk a little bit about the fund and the accelerator which has just been announced one month ago uh so uh, this is very fresh uh, there's still time, but uh, the earlier you start, the better, I guess, because uh, it will be uh, uh, probably requiring some uh, preparation, at least on the pr uh, proposal side. Uh, May May, thank you for joining again, and uh, we would like to hear more about uh, both. First, why why Meta is releasing this kind of uh, accelerator? So how it will maybe um, uh, create an additional complementary uh, set of apps and projects uh, on top of the existing store uh, and uh, what is your expectation so if we can get some insights from you today it will be great because there are many people who are actually looking forward to apply yeah for sure thanks again for having me um so as you mentioned earlier we announced this new program called the meta quest lifestyle app accelerator little bit of a mouthful, um, but we announced it at AW a couple of weeks ago, so it's pretty new. Um, and the program is designed to help founders prototype new lifestyle applications on Quest using mixed reality, hands, and AI. Uh, the goal of this program really is to support founders that are interested in launching new product experiences that are retentive and engaging um, in a new categories uh, within lifestyle. Um, these categories tend to help people 
do things they already love better, you know, level up life skills like paradiddle and pencil or connect with others or shared interests. Um, we are starting to see a lot of founders prototype and experiment with some of the new use, new, new use cases uh, within hackathons, especially since Quest 3 launched. And so we wanted to create a program that can really help founders accelerate that process um, and, and develop on Quest. Perfect, perfect. So shall we go a little bit to details? Like uh, what does lifestyle means? Like a, can I bring my existing apps type of things? Like there are so many questions as you can imagine, but let's start from maybe with a few examples even. Maybe if anyone who would like to even tell not, you don't, you don't need to tell the whole uh, project you have, of course here, don't reveal it, but at least you can tell, is this category fitting to the lifestyle app accelerator? If you have these kind of questions, please uh, ask on the Q&A tab because we will uh, start answering in a few minutes. Yeah, for sure. So um, in terms of like what we mean by lifestyle, um, we're, we're talking about things that help people do things they already love better, um, improving life skills and connecting with others over a shared interest. Um, so the program does not include uh, video games. It does not include entertainment products um, and it does not include fitness or sports as well. Um, other categories of shared interest, such as maybe cooking or fashion, shopping, DIY, arts and crafts, music, design, these are things that we know and think people love to do outside of headset, but that we don't have great experiences yet. And so we really want to see what creative ideas founders come up with to tackle some of these new verticals. Perfect. I also see categories like beauty, dating. So let's <laughs> see how, how will it work out? uh yeah i mean uh one more question actually since we were also talking with ai uh, it's a question for me if if i have something that i would like to also utilize some ai uh powered uh, things is it also allowed yeah for sure i mean we think that there's a lot of opportunity within the lifestyle vertical especially to experiment with mr hands and ai AI is so new, there's not a lot of it on the platform yet, but I think there's a lot of opportunity to, to, to do it. So we're excited to see proposals in those spaces. And just one more clarification on the categories. Some of the categories that are listed are things that we think people will be interested in, but it's not an exhaustive list. So if you have an idea outside of that list that you're really excited about building for, like please submit a proposal. The goal of the program also is to just understand and see like what unique use cases people come up with that we aren't coming up with ourselves because we don't know everything. and. Um, founders are more creative than we are. So yeah, don't be, don't feel limited by the categories that I've listed or that are on the website directly. Exactly. Um, we can have a multiple, I mean, as long as it's not a video game, fitness, entertainment is, of course, everything is entertaining. So we need to maybe be much more clear about that. For example, like a, uh, some kind of like a movie player type of things is under entertainment, right? Correct. Yeah. Movies, um, like pure flat 2D, two, two you know, video screens are, we consider media entertainment, concerts, that sort of thing, purely for the purpose of entertainment. Of course, we expect that a lot of these consumer lifestyle apps to be entertaining and to have a lot of gaming elements, but the purpose of it shouldn't be just to play a game or just to be entertained. The purpose should be to do something else, maybe to hang out with friends or to, you know, improve a skill or something else. Perfect, perfect. Uh, I will uh, start maybe uh, uh, asking some of the questions which is being already asked and waiting. Uh, we can definitely uh, continue uh, if because there's already 13 questions. So let's let's start one by one. Uh, can okay. existing startups apply? I think this is an important question. Let me let me uh, elaborate this question more. Can existing startups apply? Can I apply if I'm not a, a legal entity yet? What should I do if I win? So okay. I ask a bundle question. Great. And I see another, there's a separate question on like what stage they should be in. So I'll, I'll sort of answer those two together as well. Um, so the program is really designed for um, new or for founders that are looking to build a new companies and new products on Quest. Um, you can be an existing startup that there's no limitation on like when you incorporate, um, but the product that you submit an application for should be in the early stages, um, pre-vertical slides, pre-prototyping. If you are past that stage, like pencil is already pretty mature, it might not be a good fit for you because you're just not gonna get as much from the program itself because of the way it's designed. But if you're in the early, early stage of the prototyping and trying to figure out what this thing is, this is a great, that's a great spot for you to be in. 
Um, you can apply as an individual, but if you are selected and um, for the program, we do need you to be incorporated in order to sign a contract. So keep that in mind. Um, and in terms of like geography and location, um, really anybody can apply as long as we can pay you. So if you look carefully at our terms and conditions on the website, um, we list out a couple countries that are excluded from that. So pay attention to those. But the majority of countries, I think, are eligible. And if you are from a country that is not officially supported by Quest, um, you are still eligible. But we would expect that you have your own device and we would not be able to give you debits. Okay, one maybe scenario since we also talk about a lot of hackathons. So let's say uh, I joined this global XR hack in one month, happening in one month. Uh, I finished my app with the team for 48 hours, working 48 hours, uh, and I win or I didn't win anything. Uh, can I still use the uh, existing stuff that I built for 48 hours or should I not use it? For the yeah, for sure. I think like the hackathon is a great way to like test some ideas and to come up with new things and even to like find teammates that you want to build a company together with. Um, again, as long as it's sort of pre-vertical slice stage, by the time the program starts, which is around December time frame, it's probably a good um, a good uh, time to apply. Okay. Um, there are. Uh, I mean, there's a question like uh, there are other um, RFP programs or support programs of Meta. Um, if an app is already falling into these programs, would you reply, recommend applying to multiple funding programs? Um, so I'm looking at the question right now. Just give me a sec. So, so start recognition yeah. and website. Okay, got yeah. it. Um, cool. So um, the the program for lifestyle. Uh, sorry, applications for lifestyle are mutually exclusive from Ignition. So if you receive an Ignition funding, um, you are not eligible to apply for the lifestyle accelerator. If you are unsure of which category or which one you should apply to, I'm happy to like take a look at your proposal and steer you in the right direction if that is confusing to you. So um, like happy to send my email over as well so you can, can, uh, can contact me directly. Um, START uh, is a separate program um, and these are not mutually exclusive. So we fully expect that some graduates of STARTS might be in a good place, you know, apply to the accelerator program. In some cases, you, again, might do, be too mature. So it really depends on like what stage you are in your development process. But existing START members can apply, uh, non-START members can apply. The only restriction is if you are an ignition-funded developer, you cannot apply. Perfect. Uh, we have actually a lot of questions on the chat but unfortunately chat is uh, quite crowded right now uh, like a flooding I cannot follow so please uh, Jimmy um, Lily Oguz uh, please uh, Jill please uh, submit your question under Q&A tab otherwise it is very hard for us to follow all the discussions there so um, yeah there is one more question about the timing if you cannot apply by October 15th, is there any opportunity uh, there? And I'm asking another bundle question. Um, if I apply early, is it helpful for my uh, evaluation of my project? Yeah, okay, great. Um, so in terms of timelines, we encourage founders to apply as early as possible. The earlier apply, the, the more opportunity we would have to give you some feedback on the proposal to, to help you refine it if needed. Um, we are not making decisions until the, after the deadline has passed though. So um, if you apply early, you won't find out until everyone finds out. Um, in terms of uh, applying after the deadline, um, right now there's only plans for us to uh, do this accelerator once. In the future, we may do it again, but we don't have um, current plans to do that yet. So um, keep an eye out, I guess, for, for news if we announce an, a second wave of this program. Perfect. Uh, one maybe question before we go, because there are some questions about these are these fits. Uh, I just want to make sure that maybe we a little bit tell uh, about the 5th of August. Uh, what will happen on 5th of August? Because many people are asking, uh, because it may also help me to go to store even uh, in a better shape than 
uh, than before, like uh, maybe quicker. So can you give us a little bit of like what's changing? I think uh, App Lab is right now will not be existing anymore. So can you give a little bit of details about 5th of August? Yeah, uh, but just a caveat, like I'm not I'm not working on the direct work stream for the open store. So my my knowledge might be a little limited, um, but essentially um, we publicly announced a couple of days ago that we are going to be opening up the store on August 5th. So App Lab is going to go away and all developers will be, will be able to submit their app directly to the store um, starting then. Um, we have a public blog um, that I can link out in the chat as well later for, for you to take a look at the details if you have more questions. Um, and if you have questions beyond that, I probably am not the best person to answer it. So I am happy to redirect your question to the right people internally, uh, if there are any.